It's time for our weekly arts and culture segment. Joining me in the studio is our culture correspondent, Song Yujin. Welcome, Yujin. Good evening, Jungmin. Evening. So what do you have for us today? Well, Jungmin, a very big, important event coming up next week. President Yoon suk is paying a state visit to the U.S. That's first for a Korean president in 12 years and will meet U.S. President Joe Biden. And so a lot of attention is focused on how their meeting and the state visit will impact Washington's Seoul ties in terms of politics diplomacy, economy, and of course, culture. And what's also worth noting is that this year marks the 70th anniversary of the Lions. So for this week's segment, I talked to several experts about the two countries' cultural friendship. From K-pop to Hollywood blockbusters, it's not an exaggeration to say that South Korea and the United States have never been connected more culturally. Their bond dates back to the 1950s when the two countries formed an alliance through the Mutual Defense Treaty in 1953. In 1954, the American Forces Korean Network radio channel started airing in Korea. Koreans were able to listen to American broadcasts directly, especially a lot of music like pop and jazz. Then in 1979, the Korean Cultural Center, a government institution promoting Korean culture overseas, opened its first U.S. branch in New York. When it comes to culture exchanges, it's all about being able to give and take. Before, it was mostly one-sided with Koreans soaking up American culture. But ever since these centers opened up in the States, things have started to balance out. The 1990s was another big era for cultural connection following Korea's democratization and the exporting of movies and music. However, experts say the past decade has seen an exponential strengthening of cultural ties thanks to the popularity of Korean entertainment like Psy's Gangnam Style, BTS, Blackpink, Parasite and Squid Game. Korea, Korean culture is no longer something that's completely new to the audience. It's not necessary to really have to introduce Korean culture anymore, um, whether that's food, clothing, beauty products, um, even language. You know, Americans' understanding of Korea and Koreans' understanding of Korea is no longer superficial. It's more of a, a, a real understanding of, of where people come from, the values that we share in terms of our government and society. And the two countries are expected to build stronger cultural relationships this year. There is the Yoon Biden summit. Seoul's culture ministry has declared 2023 as the first year of the South Korea-U.S. cultural partnership, launching exchange programs, lectures, and concerts. This will ultimately foster even more positive relations between the two. Cultural ties are really synonymous with people-to-people -people ties. You can enjoy somebody's culture from another country, but having that kind of alliance relationship where your people get to know each other, your people have shared values, that's a different kind of dynamic, and it leads to a different level of partnership and understanding. What a transition, Eugene. So the culture ministry has designated this year as the first year of Seoul and Washington's cultural partnership. You're right, Tomin. So to talk all briefly about what's up next, first, on April 28th, the National Library of Korea will offer a special exchange program uh, designated to a selected group of American and Korean youths. They will offer uh, liberal arts lectures and also discussions on films and books. In exchange, the Library of Congress in the U.S. will also offer lectures on South Korea-U.S. relations in June. And we, when we go over to August, there'll be a concert celebrating that 70th anniversary of the alliance featuring world-renowned soprano Cho Soo-mi. Also, the world's largest K-culture festival, K-Con, will take place in August in L.A. as well. And not only that, but Korean original musicals will be staged on Broadway this October as part of the, K as part of the culture ministry's K-Musical Roadshow. And speaking of the Yoon Biden Summit, anything to look forward to in terms of culture? Well, there actually is. First of all, leaders of content production companies such as Netflix and Watcha, um, they're set to attend the so-called Global Video Content Leadership Forum that will take place in Washington, D.C. during President Yoon's visit to the U.S. And this event was arranged by the U.S. Motion Picture Association. And some of the key agenda items that are set to be discussed is ways to really expand people-to-people -people exchanges in the content industry and overall ways to kind of up in the cooperation 
relation between the two countries in the culture and content industry as well. A lot to look forward to. All right, Eugene, thanks for your report. Thank you.